Hello. In today's video, I'm going to talk about why every cam is not necessarily a turbo cam. Now, Richard Holder started telling people not every cam is a turbo cam. I'm sure because guys are always asking, do I need a turbo cam? Do I need a supercharger cam? You know, what do I need? And he was trying to point out that especially in low power applications, you don't really need to worry about a specific camshaft. Now, there are lots of terms that we use for camshafts and lots of descriptions. And yes, some of them are a little bit about advertising, but some of it is also about helping you that may not understand camshafts that well, pick an appropriate camshaft that will work for your application. Now, the terms we use are varied. And the latest one, of course, is the thumper camshaft. Now, I realize I'm trying to talk about turbos, but I want to talk about what these terms actually mean. Now, in the case of the thumper camshaft, it gives you a little bit of that chop, a little bit of that rough idle that normally you get with a big camshaft and yet you don't have the drawbacks of running a big camshaft. And what that does is manipulate the events up here at overlap in order to give you that chop without necessarily giving you a poor running cam at low RPM, which is normally, if you run a big enough cam to get chop, that's what happens. So it's basically designed to ma manipulate the events a bit. Now, if you go way back in history, we used to have full race and three quarter race cams. Now we laugh at those events or those names now, but that was Ed Winfield and that was back in the 20s and early 30s. For the, the cars of the day, it was the best camshaft he could make horsepower wise. And so that was what he considered full race. Now, Again, like I said, that's the 20s and 30s, so we're talking almost 100 years ago. So, though we laugh at them these days, that was a long time ago. Now, most of the time these days, we have a, a variety of names, and there's some others that aren't up here. Um, you know, stock camshaft, the, the factory camshaft, which is designed for emissions, mileage, drivability, um, it's not really considered a performance camshaft. It's a stock camshaft and the manufacturer has their own reasons for the events that are, that are there. Um, RV cam, which pumps up the low RPM a little bit. You've got road race, which is a little broader power band. You've got drag race, which is more about high end. You know, nitrous, supercharger, turbocharger. I mean, there's all these different classes of camshafts. Now each one of these is a little bit different. And it's not really about what makes the most horsepower. Um, it's really about trying to make the vehicle function better in the environment that it's going to be in. And, and one of the things that Richard has used as showing every cam is a turbo cam is that every cam makes horsepower. Well, we know boost makes horsepower. I mean, that's more about boost than it is about the camshaft. You know, yes, boost will amplify what you have, but each cam does its own individual thing. If we talk about RV cams for just a quick minute, um, the this is a cam looking at a camshaft. I should have brought that up. Um, intake cycle, compression cycle, power cycle, exhaust cycle. 720 degrees TDC, TDC, bottom dead center, bottom dead center. So this is basically looking at the full cycle of a camshaft. Now, in the case of an RV cam, you're really working on this event up here, which is um, like 75 degrees after top dead center. It's the point, each motor is a little different, but it's the point at which the piston speed reaches its maximum speed. And that's an important fill point for low RPM, especially. So in an RV cam, usually what they're doing is, is trying to increase the fill at that point. 
uh, just a little more duration maybe, but it's not really about duration. You know, they may tighten up the lobe center a bit, put it in four degrees of bench, which moves the cam a little bit closer to that point, and give you a little bit more lift so you have a little more airflow. It's basically just a cam designed to increase the amount of power just off idle. And, and you know, you're not really trying to go way up in RPM because in an RV, you're talking a heavy vehicle or a heavy load. You want power still way down low, like the factory does, but you're less concerned about some of the factory concerns, and you can pump up that power a little bit. That's an RV cam. Now, there are other camshafts. Now, if we skip down here to a drag race cam, which is the exact opposite, that the goal of a drag race cam, a real drag race cam, is maximum peak horsepower. You know, it, it's not, it doesn't care. You can have a lot of overlap up here. I mean, you're, you're, I'm not talking, you know, seven degrees, 12 degrees, that's not overlap. That, that's just a little thing. I, I'm talking about cams that have 30, 40, 60 degrees of overlap. We're talking about big cams, lots of duration, lots of lift, fast ramps, big sprints. That's a drag race cam. And, and its goal is strictly to race at a drag strip, produce the absolute peak amount of horsepower you can, and complete disregard for lower end. You know, it, you're going to run lots of stall. You're going to run lots of gear. It's going to be a lightweight car. Uh, it's going to be a very high duration on the camshaft. It's going to be closing this intake way late to try and maximize the complete fill at higher RPM. Now, that would cause reversion on a regular motor, and that's why between high overlap and a late closing, you're going to have very poor low speed response. But in a drag race cam, you don't care. You, you care, if it idles at 1400, that's fine. You're, you're going to have stall. If it doesn't even start making power until 3500, that's fine too. You know, maybe even 4000. And, and so that's a drag race cam, and that's exactly opposite of what an RV cam is. And that's part of the reason these terms exist is it's basically finessing the camshaft in order to make it work better for you. Now, this isn't necessarily about making the most power all the time. That, that's not it. Now, if you're running a dyno all the time, you start thinking in terms of what makes the most horsepower. Well, that's not really what these terms are about. It's about making the motor run properly in the environment that it's supposed to be and at the RPM where you need that power. It's less about what kind of power it's going to make. It's more about where that power is going to happen and how the engine is going to run. Now, if we skip down here, now if you want to know more about some of these other types of cams, leave me a, a note in comments section and I can do a, another video on other types of camshafts that will help you understand better why they are what they are. But in this case, we're talking about turbos and why not every cam is a turbo cam. Now, in the case of a turbo, you have certain things that you need to do. Now, Richard is fond of, of pointing out that, you know, any cam will work. Well, in little camshafts, in basic applications, that is very true. I mean, we all know that boost just increases the amount of power that's there because air is horsepower. So if you're forcing in X amount of boost, you are equally amount increasing the amount of air in the cylinder and making that much more horsepower. I mean, it's fairly straightforward. And in small applications, you know, you're, you're on the street, you may only be, you know, running a, a few pounds of boost, you know, seven pounds of boost or something. That's fine. But as you go up in levels, even with these other types of camshafts, you start running into troubles, and there are things that will happen. Now, before I talk about a regular turbo application, I want to bring up one that he did that didn't work out quite as well as he hoped. Now, that's the Cadillac 500 uh, turbocharger video that he did. 
Now, that's like the worst case the other way from where we normally are with turbochargers. It's a big motor. He ran a small turbo. He was thinking, well, I'll limit the power so I don't blow up the motor. Well, the problem is that a small turbo with lots of exhaust will spool up really fast. So you can reach a choke point, but he was thinking, well, that'll limit how much power I have. The problem is that that motor also had an RV cam in it. Now, the RV cam is also designed to pump up that low-end power. And so between the large size of the motor, the RV cam, and the small turbo, this thing was coming on like gangbusters right away. And so he was having trouble with it making boost at the load in on the dyno. He kept having to move the RPM up as boost increased because he couldn't get the dyno to hold. And then when it failed, it failed spectacularly with a head gasket blowing water everywhere across the dyno room because that low end power is really pressure. I mean, remember in a cylinder, power is really about pressure. And so that mean effective pressure in the cylinder at low RPM was way hot. I mean, that was way up there. And that's part of the reason when it blew a gasket, it blew out so much like it did. Now, you may be saying to yourself, well, yeah, but if you could get it to hold, it would be fine. Well, I built one of those motors. Uh, it was supercharged, not turbocharged. Cadillac 500 with boost, not even a lot of boost. We're only talking about eight pounds of boost. But it was making like a thousand foot-pounds of torque right off of idle. And you're like, wow, cool. Well, yeah, not you know, so much so. It, it was galling the teeth on the transmission. It tore up U-joints. I had to go to a better drive shaft, bigger U-joints. It tore the pinion clear out of the rear end. It, once I fixed that to a better, it, it then started breaking axles. I went to a bigger, heavier axle, and now it's got a twist and a half on a really good axle. That's what torque does. Now, it sounds cool, and it certainly will move a lot of heavy weight. You know, a lot of torque, I mean, that's what diesels do, a lot of torque. But that's really hard on a motor, and that's really hard on the rest of the part. So one of the benefits of going to a turbo over a supercharger is you have more control over boost. Uh, you have more control about how the motor will function. Now, a motor will survive a lot better, and your drivetrain will, if you're making power further up in the RPM band than I was with that particular application. So that's one of the things you want to enhance on a turbocharger. Now, with a turbocharger, you've got several things going on. Now, normal setup, if we get away from the Cadillac, a normal setup is you're running usually a pretty big turbo, uh, maybe even bigger than you really need for the particular application for the horsepower you're trying to, to move. So the first thing that kind of comes up that you don't ever see on a dyno and that Richard thinks, well, you can just give it a little bit more stall converter is turbo lap. And, and a lot of guys wind up fighting this fairly well. Now, in a drag racing application, you can do dump valves, you can do other things. And, and certainly a little bit more stall converter will help get the RPM up and reduce some of the turbo. The lag, I'm sorry. <coughs> now, we're talking about camshafts. And this is where the term turbo camshaft comes into effect. Some of this can be addressed with the camshaft itself. Now, the exhaust opening point helps drive that turbo. Now, on a normal cam, this is like 35, 40 degrees or so, especially if you're not running a, a really big cam. And that exhaust point is what's dumping the exhaust gas to run this, this turbine. And it's about pressure and it's about velocity. Now, if you can get some heat in here to keep expanding that air, that's a benefit too. But it's really about pressure and velocity going through this turbine. 
Now, over the 30 years that, that I have dealt with some of this, turbines have improved quite a bit. And if you size it better, you will certainly have less trouble. But you can drive it a little bit with the earlier opening of the exhaust valve. Now, I'm not talking, you know, two degrees, four degrees. In camshafts, things are very so. Usually you're talking 10 or 20 degrees before you start seeing a big change. So instead of opening at, at 35, you might be opening at 55 or 65 or 75. And, and that will drive the turbo harder, especially if the turbo is actually too big for what you're trying to do. That'll, that'll increase how fast that turbo comes on. Because remember, this is in the power cycle. This isn't just exhaust gas, this is pressure. You, you may have two or 3,000 PSI in here to, to dump off out the exhaust valve and run that turbine. And so this can really help the response rate of the turbine. So as we go around on the camshaft, the next thing that comes up is overlap. Now, Richard said overlap makes power. Overlap doesn't make power. And, and it's certainly not making power in a turbocharged application because you have pressure in the exhaust. The, the whole reason you can use exhaust to help increase some of the power is because a fine-tuned, and this is a tuned header to the RPM you need it, the correct size, will generate a vacuum and help start pulling on the intake side at the end of the exhaust cycle. And that does happen. I have had it on the dyno. I, I've run such types of headers, naturally aspirated, and you can gain you know, 20, 25 horsepower up real close before you hit peak because you need airspeed through the, the header to make that work. And yes, that does help. But in a turbocharged application, you may even have a log manifold in here you know, hopefully you're at least running a header because that'll help the airspeed of the turbine. But um, you have pressure, so you're not generating a vacuum. You're not going to be pulling on the intake side. So overlap in a turbo application is a bad idea. Now, I'm not talking five degrees. I'm not even maybe talking seven, though probably stay under that. Um, overlap, like, like with a drag race cam, you know, when you start talking, you know, 20, 30, 50, 60 degrees of overlap at 50, I only talked in 50. So anything that I'm saying is at 50 thousandths tap it lift. When you start talking that kind of overlap, that's a really bad thing for a turbocharger. What's going to happen is this higher pressure on this side it's going to try and force it back into the cylinder at low RPM, and it's going to contaminate the charge. So you want to avoid overlap as much as you possibly can in order to help the motor out. Now, as we come around in the, the cycles of the motor, like I said, up here at 75 degrees is your low RPM power. That's the fill point at peak piston speed. Now, typically, that will generate a lot more low end. With boost on top of that low end, you can have an incredible amount of low end. So unlike a naturally aspirated motor, you don't necessarily want to pump this up. You're actually better off running a little less flow at this 75 degree point and let boost make up for it because you can especially if you've got good control over the boost curve, you can use boost and dial in what power the car can actually use. If you pump this up too far, you wind up with a motor that has so much bottom end that then you're fighting traction. You're trying to take gear out. You're, you're maybe fussing around with stall. You're, you're going to a different training that doesn't have you know, first gear. You may go to a power glide that only has second and third, basically, to take gear out of it and kill some of the torque. And so one of the things in the camshaft you want to do is maybe minimize that. So instead of pushing 
the cycle this way at a tighter load center, you may not want that. Now, the, the last piece on a turbo cam that comes up is intake closing. Now, like I said before, on intake closing event, on a naturally aspirated motor at lower RPM, you've got to worry about reversion. And that's where it tries to pulse back up the intake with this lighter intake closing point. And so a lot of times, we don't push this out very far on a naturally aspirated motor. Um, there's usually a sweet spot for the RPM you're using. You know, like I said, in drag racing where you don't care about low end, you can get away with pushing this out and getting more power. But you, you've got to think about reversion a lot of times. Now with boost, that point is going to happen um, way differently. You have boost forcing its way in. So technically, you want to pull this event out a little bit further down here than you would on a naturally aspirated motor. And so that will give it more time to fill. It's not going to run into reversion because you're under boost. And especially if you have a rising boost curve going, this can really generate a lot of top end power. And the car becomes a rocket at the big end. And so this becomes important. Now, when we add all of this together, what you see is the exhaust having to open sooner, the intake closing later, you're trying to reduce overlap, and you're trying to reduce the amount of fill at 75. Now, the easiest way to do that is you spread the load center. That moves the exhaust cycle this way, the intake cycle this way, and that's why most turbo cams are on a wide load center. You know, instead of running a 106 or a 104 that produces a lot of power because it's all working on this spot, you, you go up to a 115, 116, maybe even a 118. And, and you push these events down to help the turbo run. Now, from the standpoint of a naturally aspirated motor, if you were to test such a cam, it's kind of more like a stock cam in some ways, you're not going to make a lot of power because if this fill isn't correct on a regular naturally aspirated, you're going to have trouble making power. Now, this point is not as important on a turbocharged application. The reason is you're going to use boost to help fill this point a little bit better. You don't need the camshaft event all the way down here in order to increase the fill of the cylinder. And by dragging this out at higher RPM, you get even better fill. So that's why a turbo cam is on wider lobe center. And, and the bigger the duration, because you don't want overlap, the wider the lobe center becomes. You know, you can run a 115 lobe center with 230 duration have basically no overlap and with a turbocharger you then start controlling things with boost. That's a turbo cam. Not every cam fits that definition. Now with smaller cams, if you're only talking something that's 212 or 215, well yeah, you don't need, you just pick a cam that doesn't really have overlap, it's on the right lobe center, you, you toss it in there. This is really more about as things get to be bigger, as you're trying to go more all out. And you can see it starts becoming a little tougher as you get into even bigger camshafts than that because you start running into overlap problems. So a turbo cam has a very specific set of events to help the turbocharger run. Not every cam has those events. So when you're looking at camshafts, you can decide what you need to do. Now, do you have to run a turbo cam? No. If it's a basic motor, a few pounds of boost, you're not necessarily going all out. You don't have to do all of this, especially if the turbo is sized well and you don't have to push this exhaust point out. But as you're going up and up in turbo size, trying to make more and more power, this becomes way more important 
And then, yeah, you need to be running a turbo-specific care shaft to help your particular application run correctly. Now, like I said, there are other ones. If you want to know more, let me know in the comments. But that's basically a turbo kin. And that's basically how they work. And, and don't necessarily go by what Richard says, because he's really only looking on a dyno. You know, it, when you get on the street and you have to try and make these things actually run right, things change about what you're trying to do. So I hope this information helps you out in your project, helps you make a better decision about what you're picking in a camshaft. And uh, I wish you well in all of your projects. And that's basically why not every cam is a turbo cam. Talk to you later.